Hello, my name is Ricardo Gonzalez, and today I will be doing lab report number five, which I decided to do about projectile motion. I decided to do my final lab report about projectile motion because it is a phenomenon we observe in our everyday lives. We see it when we throw something to another person, we, th we see it when we watch soccer, we see it when we play basketball, etc. The purpose of this lab is to analyze the motion of a common day occurrence, which is projectile motion. We will use Newton's second law to determine some of the most important characteristics of such motion. The result. The values we got considering air drag differ from the ones we got without considering it. Some, import, some important information you need to know about projectile motion is that a projectile is an object upon which the only force acting upon it is gravity, but we will create a Python code in which drag force takes place in order to see the difference in the values. In the case of my experiment, I chose it to be about someone throwing a jar of Nutella to another person because we see that every day. An important remark that needs to be highlighted is that I chose the first tracker position right at the instant where the ball leaves the hand, so no initial force is taken into consideration. Now we will, I will show you my tracker video. This is someone throwing the jar on Nutella and uh, another person catching it. I chose my the coordinate at the center of the Nutella jar and because it was a good location. Now I will show you the overview of the experiment. The system is the jar of Nutella, the surroundings is the air and earth, the fundamental physics principles involved is Newton's second law or momentum principle. And here you can see the formula used. The data. You can see the initial position, initial velocity, the mass, final position, time, the drag constant used, which I chose because it was the value that gave a more accurate description of the motion. And observing the, dra the tracker positions, I got the maximum height and the time where the maximum tie, uh, where the maximum height was achieved. Now this formula I used to calculate the initial velocity and then with that initial velocity I used this formula to calculate the final velocity in the y component. Now I will show you my Python code, which is uh, very, very similar to, lab num to labs number two code. The only difference is that the ball velocity has um, a velocity in the x component, which in this case was negative 1.75. Here you can see the time interval I'm using and also I told the program to print the values of the ball velocity and the ball position. If I run the code, this is what we'll see. This the yellow arrow is gravity and you can see here that the distance in x is very similar to the one we saw in tracker which is 0 0.7 and here is 0 0.6 this was the model with, n with no drag now if we take into consideration the model with drag which the only difference is the value of the drag constant we will see that we will get more accurate results because the y component is almost at zero and the x component is closer to seven. And you can see that the velocity is very accurate.
now the conclusion of my experiment is that if we consider the calculations we made without air drag we will see that they are a bit far off from the reality and we can also use Newton's second law to understand projectile motion and finally projectile motion does not necessarily have to involve a parabola it can also be an object free falling or going up and down in a vertical manner Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.